normally using the instrument, they might put it a note here and also on the board in the counting room. You see the back of it there? Okay. It says, you know, your name, time, your phone number, that sort of thing. So people know who's got the instrument. So, all right, so we gave it, you know, 45 minutes and it's upper minus sixes. Okay. For today, this is fine because we're going to do titanium. And when you melt titanium into the um, vacuum, when it boils off, it actually will adhere things like water vapor to the walls, which actually improves your vacuum as well. So that's one of the reasons we always supply you guys with titanium. If for some reason it's not quite as good a vacuum as you want, you can evaporate a little titanium and it might improve things. All right. Now you notice, remember we started, it was like six Kelvin, now it's like, you know, nine, okay? That's because we're pumping this whole chamber, right? And the chamber has been exposed to the environment. And everything. So that's why this gets warmer over time, or it freezes to a cold plate here. Okay, so we're ready to turn things on. And I'll point out that you could refer back to this if you need to in the future, but today we'll just talk about it uh, hands on here. Where next film should be, and I'll double check, next film should be one, so that's correct. Now we can try to run the instrument from here, but we haven't turned on the high voltage yet, so it's not gonna work very well. Okay, we're on position one, that's good, okay. Both of our shutters are closed, and that's fine. Thermal shutter doesn't matter, so to turn on the high voltage, it's a series of on buttons. First of which is the breakers on the high voltage box. Mm -hmm. and that's the external power supply. Then you turn the key on. Then you press the on and you wait for a minute. What you're waiting for is your fans and relays and high voltages click over. When that's done, you're ready to proceed. Now the fans are running. Again, this light here, this what's called a cutback light, is uh, flashing briefly. So um, when they turned on, and that's to be expected. I'll explain that later. Um, all right. So the next thing we actually turn the high voltage part on, which we do. We've gone on, 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 reset, and what that does is that checks all of the safeties. Water is flowing, air is flowing where it ought to, the vacuum is good enough. If the vacuum gets above about 5, 10 to minus 5, the high voltage will cut out because it's, you might be venting or something, and in which case it shouldn't be running. Um, all right, and then it defaults to the off position. Press on, and you'll see we're now at minus 10 kilovolts, and it'll say high voltage on here. Okay, and remember this cutback light? You can see it's not completely off, but it's not completely on either sort of partially lit, okay? That's a, one of the safety circuits. What cutback does is it um, detects shorts to ground, basically. And so one of the things that happens in an E-beam um, is that you're trying to get it to ground through your source by melting it, right? And going on out through there. Because uh, the source is in some sort of crucible liner and then that's in a copper heart. So there's a ground there if it wants it. It will try to find other grounds because there are lots of big chunks of metal in the chamber that are grounded and things like that. So, um, but if it finds another ground, the uh, current draw will go up dramatically. And the cutback circuit detects that. And so it will temporarily, for a couple of milliseconds or whatever, turn the beam off and back on. And when it does that, it will reestablish in the right position. Okay, it won't find a ground over here, it'll go back through your source. Um, and so you'll see that flicker sometimes to full brightness. If it ever goes to full brightness and stays there, what that means is you have a short, probably a piece of metal, stuck between the two electrodes on the filament. Okay, like we talked about before. So in that case, what you have to do is turn the high voltage off, turn it back on. It might fall away and you can keep going, but it might not, in which case you'll have to pump out. Okay, you have no chance of that. So all the more reason to clean up the chamber when you prep. So that doesn't happen. Okay, so. We've got high voltage. We haven't actually turned the power up yet. Okay. And the other thing we have to do, though, is uh, you see the sweep control area here? We want to turn that on. And it should be in spiral mode. It should be in sweep select mode. It should be in spiral mode. So that's proper. Okay. You see sweep select only. Okay. Turn that on, and you'll see there's some oscillations. Okay. What that is, is you don't want it in one spot. You want to try to heat a broad area of your source. And so this sweeps in some kind of oscillating spiral pattern based on the parameters we've given it. We'll adjust it a little bit today to see how it works. Really, the only things you're typically going to adjust are latitude and longitude, which is X and Y. Okay, 
to make sure that you're over the middle because as you increase current and stuff sometimes the beam will drift a little bit and you can use those to put it back in the middle okay so but you shouldn't have to do any of this stuff over here just turn that on if that's there there and there you're good to go okay so now we're ready to actually start from here we're going to run it manually but the default mode for the pre-programmed films is is automatic so when i press start the first time it's going to say ready okay it still hasn't switched films or anything i press start again it'll switch to film one it checks the crystal and then it goes to a pre-programmed rise point okay, in the power. it's going to go all the way up to three percent okay for e-beam, the most you should ever use is like six or six and a half percent. And if you're doing that, probably something's wrong. <laughs> or you're doing something very high temperature like nickel. Okay. I let it go ahead and rise manually because otherwise it can only go up by a tenth of a percent. Okay. So I let it rise automatically. Then I'm not going to press stop because that will turn it off. I'm going to press manual. Okay. And you'll see this light comes on. That means I can control it here. Now I know from experience that titanium is going to evaporate. 3.7, 3.8, 3.9%, something like that. Maybe four. It depends on how well things are working today. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to like 3.5%. Uh, power depends on the uh, titanium, gold, platinum. Or? What power you need? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain, like gold will need a little more. It'll need like four or four and a half percent to do gold. Okay. Uh, platinum would be a little more, probably. And a lot of that's a factor of, um, you know, a melting point like that. Now this is, you know, percentage of the whole. This is a 10 kilowatt supply. We have 10 kilovolts, so we have up to an amp. You know, we're getting 3%, so we're 30 milliamps or 40 milliamps or something like that. This is not a lot of current, but that's the beam that's actually striking the source. Okay, so we don't need a lot of current if it's hitting, every electron's hitting it with 10 kilovolts of acceleration, <laughs> right? We're going to heat it up. Now, we got both shutters closed, okay? The detector is over here, right? If I don't open this shutter, I'll never see the rate that I'm getting, okay. right? So I need to open this now, okay? And if you hear noise, that's just compressed air that actuates the motor, okay, for these shutters. They're all compressed air actuators. One of them has a little bit of a leak to it. It's okay. It's just compressed air. It's not a big deal. You look in there now, what you'll see, and there's a UV protecting film over that window, you'll see kind of a an illuminated square area. That was the hole in the copper hearth where the beam comes up through because it's in a circle, right? The filament's down here and it gets bent in a circle by a magnetic field and then into your source. So what you're seeing right now is that square hole that the beam goes through. Right? In a few minutes, as our source warms up and we'll see our vacuum will get worse before it gets better, as we boil off the surface oxide and stuff like that, the source will start to glow. And we'll see a glowing chunk of titanium in there. Uh, it's just barely beginning. If you cup your hands and look, you can see a little orange glow in there. You may have to get very close. You may have to even cover it. But eventually, it'll get very bright. So I know we're starting. And I know, again, I'm going to go up a little bit more. I'm going to actually get us all the way up to 3.7. If, if, if power is high or lower, what what would happen? If it's if it's higher than you than you need, you're going to get a really really fast rate, which may not be good. If you want a higher quality film, a slightly lower deposition rate is good. Uh, but if you're doing a very thick film, that's not as important. But if you're doing a thin film, you want a, a, a slow rate okay. because that, that that relates to your quality. If it's not high enough power, you won't get any rate at all. It'll just be glowing, but it won't be completely melted, and therefore it won't evaporate. Because okay. so, there's, there's hot, and then there's melted. We need to get to melted before it will evaporate. Okay. Yeah, you can see it very well now. Okay? Okay. So yeah, it's it hot tungsten. Right? So, and you can see also, Seamus, the, uh, the pressure is getting worse, right? And that's because we're cooking off you know, oxide and water vapor and things that are on the surface of our tungsten. Okay. Now you see the light is actually kind of flickering. Okay. You see that? Yeah. The, on, the, on the surface of the tungsten. I keep saying tungsten. What I want you to do is look in there and, and adjust these top two knobs. 
you can just go back and forth with them and see how latitude and longitude affect the position of the beam. Yeah, yeah, you can turn, yeah, just the top two. And just see how it moves, okay? You see that? Yeah, yeah. So you see, if, if it ever looks off-center, you can use those two to get it back in the middle. Yeah. And you will be, have to adjust that. Okay, it should be in center. It should, it should be, well, it's, remember, it's, it's oscillating over the surface because of this, right? But, but yeah, the, the center of that oscillation should be near the middle, right? You don't want it over here on the edge, hitting the copper and your your cup if you have a graphite cup or whatever you know yes. you want it on your metal close to the middle so that you can deliver a lot of heat there and get a good balance so again our vacuum got a little worse we haven't quite melted yet the other thing is kind of depends on is how good a thermal contact you have with the hearth because that copper hearth that everything sits in is water cooled so if you know, for some reason you don't have a good thermal contact, sometimes you don't reach a good equilibrium point and your rate isn't very steady. So we're getting pretty close. I'm going to make a little adjustment. Yeah, get it back on the bulk of what's there. Go up a little bit. Now, a lot of times, you know, you're going to be doing aluminum, so aluminum adheres to a lot of materials without what they call an adhesion layer. But people who do gold then typically have to put down something like titanium or chromium first to get the gold to stick to something like silicon or whatever. So they will do a, a, a thin layer of titanium, two to three nanometers, sometimes four or five, and they evaporate it slowly, half an angstrom a second or something like that. Right now we're at point one. Okay? So we're just getting there. It's getting really bright now. It's painful to look at. It's actually so bright. It'll get a little brighter still before we go because titanium has a pretty high melting point. Okay. And remember, temperature and color go together, right? So very bright and white is very, very hot. Okay. So we have a rate. I could open it up. We're depositing a little titanium, but we're still in the heating phase. Okay. You see the vacuum started to go down a little bit as we get a better melt. go up to four. You see, again, the vacuum has gotten a little worse, and it's going to be higher than you normally want to see it because we didn't wait a long time. Okay. And you can see my rate has gotten really, really big now. Everything is melting. That's fast, right? One, one angstrom a second, two angstroms a second. That's about as fast as you want to go for, um, you know, a, a thick film on this machine. I mean, you can try to run it faster, but it's going to fluctuate. You can see it's, it's exquisitely sensitive, right? I went down by 0.2% and my rate falls, you know, dramatically. So, and I was at 4 and it was way too fast. So, but you can see our pressure has gotten better again. Right? And as I evaporate titanium, it will steadily get better and better. And we'll end up with a lower pressure than where we started. <laughs> but that only works for like titanium and maybe a couple of other materials. Well, sometimes you'll see the rate, you know, will do this on you. And that's as things melt and move around and stuff, sometimes that happens. Oh, that's too much. I think this controller is getting a little worn. I have a spare one, but I don't want to put it on until we're absolutely ready for it. So, say this was the rate I wanted. And right now we haven't really stabilized. But say this was what I wanted for my evaporation, okay? If I was ready to evaporate onto my substrate, remember, I still have this shutter closed. So my hypothetical sample is not getting coated. Only the chamber is. Okay. And the mirror and all these things. So if I want to put material on my sample, I have to open this shutter. But if I want to count correctly how much material I've put down, I want to press zero when I open this, because this only ever counts up. Okay. So if I do that, it will start counting up. Now, we're kind of slow, so I'm going to go up uh, one more click on the power and see what happens. And our rate has been, you know, all kinds of things today, so I'll just put down what I think might be an average. And these are not super critical, you know, I mean, the rate, a lot of people you know, when they're doing research samples, they're going to get a steady rate and do that. This is for demonstration, so I, yeah, it's not, it's, 
not that critical what my rate is. Uh, you know, we can talk about the thickness I put down. Um, yeah, we'll write that down when we're done. Okay. And so far, everything appears to be okay, so I'm going to preemptively write an okay here. But if something presents, you know, you can make a note. Okay. This person here, she called me on the weekend. Someone had um, changed the sweep settings, and it wasn't working. So I had to walk her through, you know, which switches to flip back because she was not 100% sure what was wrong. So I had her check a couple of things, and then we decided what we needed to reset. And for some reason, our rate has gotten a little weird. Tell that's going to get fast quickly. Questions or anything about this? No. Again, it's not that difficult, I don't think. <laughs> once you once you've had a chance to see how it all fits together. And as I keep warming it up and cooling it down, you know, our vacuum goes up and down accordingly. There's another thing to remember too when you're doing this, which is when you're evaporating on most materials except titanium, your vacuum will generally come up to some level higher than where you started. Okay, let's say you're evaporating gold or aluminum. Aluminum especially, once you get rid of that surface oxide, if the vacuum is at some kind of slightly higher pressure than where you started, but it's a steady location in pressure, it's not going up or down anymore, it's just higher, then think about what's going on. You're putting a bunch of aluminum vapor in this chamber. That raises the pressure. But it's not impurities or contamination, it's aluminum. So it's okay, right? You know, vacuum, people sometimes confuse vacuum for, you know, just contamination. When in fact, the metal vapor you're depositing can make the vacuum worse. Something to remember. So, you know, so we're, we're running. We could stop this whenever we saw fit. You know, the next person's going to come along soon, so we should go ahead and talk about, talk about shutting down. So, this is coming close to two and a half nanometers, okay? okay? And this is, again, not a great film, but this is for demonstration purposes. So, when I'm ready, and I could, you know, increase this power a little bit to try to get it to evaporate more quickly if I wanted to. But when this goes to 2.5, I'm going to stop it by closing the shutter first, which stops the deposition, and then, then I can stop the power. Okay. Stopping the power doesn't stop the rate automatically because it's still very hot, right? There's no power hitting it, but it's still blowing, mm -hmm. right? And if we had a good melt, it would still be melting, right? And so, you know, so, so you want to close the shutter because that tells you, okay, even though it's telling me I had a thickness of, you know, point or 4.2 4 nanometers now, I actually stopped it at 2.5. See, there's our base pressure is better. As the titanium cools, it traps some gases and it ends up with a better place than where we started. Okay. Now, if you had a sample in here, what you would do is you would wait and monitor when that um, got cold. Okay, when it's no longer glowing, it may still be warm and it would burn you if you tried to touch it, but it's not so hot that you have to be very, very careful. It's not so. It's not glowing red hot. You should never open the chamber when something is glowing hot. Okay. Now, alternatively, if you were to do a second material, say we were going to do gold, you could at this point switch to gold without open. Without open. Yeah, open. yeah, yeah. That's the nice part. We can do up to six, right? And then you would go to the menu and you would change it to gold. You'll see the motor vibrate sometimes, and that's okay. You don't have to turn off the high voltage or anything because we're powered down. And so we could, whoop, not 22, I don't know what that is. Next film is two, okay, and we could review it, but we did that before, we know that it's good. Okay, so we'll just leave that, all right? And uh, yeah, so, you know, we would then ramp it back up, you know, press start again, it would go up, yeah, and then it would do both. Yeah, okay, but 
we're not doing that, so I'm going to go back to titanium so we can make sure it's cold. 